Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this lecture is on changes in velocity. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do any follow-up questions on Google Forms. So we know looking at this picture that each of these snails is speeding up. We can tell that by the fact that the spacing between the snapshots is increasing for both snails. My question to you now is, how can we describe which snail's velocity is changing faster? We kind of intuitively know it looking at this, but what words can we use to describe it? And so we're gonna introduce a new term to help us with that idea of how fast is velocity changing? And that term is gonna be acceleration. So if velocity is how fast you are moving or how fast you are going, literally change in position per time, then acceleration is gonna de describe how fast your velocity is changing. So in this case, uh, we're not looking at the motion directly, but we're looking at changes in motion or changes in velocity. Now, acceleration is a time rate, so we're looking at how that velocity is changing each second or with time, not each meter. We, while we can factor in distance and things like that, um, acceleration is defined as a change in velocity per unit time or how much the velocity changes each second or minute or hour, whatever you'd like. Now remember that velocity is a vector, so that means to change it, we can do one of two things. We can change the magnitude, that would be the size or number of it, or we could change the direction, that would be the north, south, east, west, or literally just pointing in a direction. We could also change both. So doing either or both of those things, changing the number or the direction, technically changes the velocity. Therefore, if we're doing either of those things or both, we are technically accelerating. So that's gonna be a difference between the use of the word acceleration in physics and the use of the word acceleration outside of physics. In physics, we use the word accelerating as any change in velocity per unit time. So that means you could be accelerating if you're speeding up, you could be accelerating if you're slowing down, you could be accelerating if you're just changing directions but going a constant speed. All of those are forms of acceleration because in these two, the magnitude is changing and in this one, the direction is changing. Outside of physics, we tend to use the word accelerate for uh, just speeding up and we use different words for slowing down and changing directions. But I want you to remember that in physics, acceleration can be any of these three things or a combo of some of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at acceleration a little bit more and talk about the direction of acceleration. So remember that spacing tells you the average speed between snapshots. So here we can see this snail is going a constant speed. Here we can see this snail is speeding up and here we can see this snail is slowing down because the spacing decreases versus here the spacing increased versus here the spacing stayed the same. So if we're looking at this one right here, we know that the velocity is not changing. Well, if there's no change in speed or velocity, then that means there's no acceleration since acceleration is just the change in velocity per second. So here we're gonna ignore this first snapshot because it doesn't really tell us a whole lot about what's going on, but know that if something has a constant velocity, its acceleration is zero. Here, what we see is a snail who's speeding up. So literally the velocity is getting larger and larger. We can show that with the different velocity vectors. Anytime something is speeding up, we know that the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction. That's because the acceleration, the change in the velocity, is literally getting added to the velocity each second. So we could see this arrow adding onto here to give us this one. This vector adding onto here to give us this one. And so that is what's going on anytime we see something speeding up. The velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction. On the flip side, anytime we see something slowing down, we know that the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions. So here we could see subtracting kind of that size of arrow from this vector right here to give us this one and subtracting this from here to give us this one. So anytime again, the something is slowing down, we know that the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the velocity. I might be asking, well, what if it's not like in the same direction or the opposite? What if it's at an angle? Well, in that case, we would have some sort of change in direction happening. Um, and so that's what would be occurring. So let's talk about the technical definition. I've already said it once or twice, but let's go over it officially. So acceleration by definition is the change in velocity per unit time. So how much the velocity changes each second or each minute or each hour, etc. 
Um, just by that definition alone, if you can interpret mathematically, what that would look like is change in velocity, where the delta or triangle symbol here means change. Per means a fraction bar or division symbol, and time would be on the bottom. So that basically gives us how we would calculate acceleration. Namely, acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. Um, the variable for acceleration is A um, for acceleration. The units are meters per second squared is how you would say this. You can write it as m times s to the negative 2, or you can write it as m over s squared. Both mean the same thing. And the way we get that is you think about it as the units of velocity are meters per second. The units of time are seconds. So we'd have a meter per second divided by a second, which would give us a meter per second squared. Now, remember that we can also look at changes as just a final value minus an initial value. So remembering that v is our final velocity and u is our initial velocity, we can actually just take a subtraction of those two and that's the same as this. And so we've got a nice rewrite of the same equation right here. Now let's go ahead and look at this equation or this form a little bit more. Um, oh, uh, last but not least, sometimes you'll see uh, changes written as vf or v naught. Uh, where f, vf means the final velocity, v naught means the velocity at time zero, and so that would give you the change. We tend not to use that notation because ib uses the v and u notation instead, um, but uh, you'll see that very commonly elsewhere. All right, now like I said, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, idea of uh, v minus u over t. If we set that equal to a, we can actually rewrite this, moving t over to the other side and then moving the u over to the other side. And what we would get is v equals u plus a times t, where the final speed equals the initial speed plus the acceleration times time. And that gets to that idea before where we just had the acceleration vector or value literally being added to the initial velocity. Um, and how many times we add it was just how many seconds or units of time had passed. So anytime we're trying to look for a final velocity, we could also use this equation. It's literally the same equation as this one, but it's just rewritten in a different form to make life easier for you. Again, you might sometimes see it written like this. We tend not to use this form in this class, but it's out there. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on any Google Forms.